All right, next up we've got Antoine. Hello. Hi. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm Antoine, I, uh, I'm from France, and uh, I just finished my uh, studies at uh, Paul 3D. The last two years, I, uh, I work on the short film Migrants, and uh, I was uh, responsible of the, the character look development and the visual effect. And uh, this is where I, uh, I discovered Houdini. Excellent. So what's today's presentation going to be about? Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, how Houdini helped us to, to handle the different parts of, the, of our short film. Perfect. Well, let's get started. OK. In this presentation, I will talk to you about how Houdini helped us in the different parts of our graduation short film, Migrants. I will show you the setup we use to create our environment. Then I will present you how we make our water effect and some procedural assets. And finally, we will talk about the scene we use for our character effects. I'll start with the part which takes us the most of our time to create, our environment tool. The idea was to create an environment with great density and small details. After some research, we decided to make it with the height field package. For this, we follow the tutorial of Ari Danish on the SideFX website, which was great to help us understand how it works. We will take this shot to show you how we built our environment. First, we made a set dressing with our main assets. It was important to keep this step manually in order to control the composition of the shot. Thanks to the alambic, we can split the different parts using the attribute path. Because of this, we were really strict about the naming system in our scene. It was imperative to create a procedural scene, which we can use in all the other shots. After we import the set dress and the camera of the shot, we can go in this HDR where all the magic happens. We convert our ground and we can start creating our masks. We began to place our trees in the background. For this, we use the mask of our existing assets, that means our set dress, and we also use the camera frustrum to optimize the scene. The eye field scatter allowed us to create points using a source of point. So, we use the trees we just created to scatter our biggest rusk and bushes. When the biggest assets are put, we start adding some details. We make the same as we do for our trees, we create a mask with all existing assets, which are the set dress, trees, rocks and bushes, and we scatter some medium rocks. When it's done, we made the same for mushrooms and all the other assets we want to add. The eye field scatter just gives us a bunch of points. So for each step, we add an HDA we create. This HDA adds an attribute that refers to the assets we want to instantiate on the point. Here, for example, on the point represents the trees, we add a randomized attribute that refers to the different species of trees we model. And we have a control of the rate of each species. That helps us to create a diversity in our environment. And we copy the asset on the point, and we can see the result in the round of view. And this is how we made all of our environment. The most important challenge for us was to match the water to our artistic direction. So we decided that our ocean will be made with plastic material. I will present you the scene in which we have the more water effect to handle. I'll start with the water. We spend some time to find the best way to make the movement for the water, and it ends that the best result come with the easier method. We just played with some noise, and it matched very well with our look development. We played with the offset of the noise to give the water a direction, and without forget the y-axis that gives us chaos in the movement like we see in our reference. To make our wave, we use the ocean waves and the ocean evaluate. 
we animated the points that generate the wave, so we had a control of the motion. Then we played with the ocean waves parameter to get the result we want. The second step was to add our piece of plastic above the water. For this, we made different pieces of plastic to create diversity and we copy them on points we scatter on the water. We use the Vellum solver to simulate the pieces of plastic in a low definition and we attach them to the surface of the water. It gives them the motion which follow the water movement. Then we used a point deform from the low poly to the high poly pieces. It saves us a lot of time because we don't need density for the simulation but we definitely need it for the look development. Then we made the interaction between the ice species and the water. We had two types of interaction. The first one was to generate plastic pieces at the bottom of the ice. For this, we generate points at the side of the ice geometry and we stick them at the surface of the water with the renode. And we can copy the plastic pieces to our points. In order to add variety and motion, we add a switch node with this algorithm. In this algorithm, the input number was the number of plastic pieces we have, and the QF was the frequency, or the number of frames the plastic piece will last before switching to another piece. So, if the water was calm, we put a higher frequency, and a lower frequency if the sea was rough. The second type of interaction was the same idea, but we used a pop net to make the point move away from the piece of ice. These steps were our basic setup for every shot with water in the movie. For this shot, we had two more steps for the water. Thanks to the ocean system, we can use the node ocean foam to generate points where the foam had to be. We just had to keep the points we need to optimize the scene. Then, like before, we copy our plastic pieces to our points. And the last thing was to make the splash when the iceberg fall. For this part, we make a mask of the iceberg on the ocean with an attribute transfer. We use this mask to scatter some points on the water. We played with the normal of this point that we will use as velocity and we plug them into a pop network. In the pop network, we just add a pop drag and a gravity to add some physics and a pop kill to optimize the scene because we don't need particles under the water. When we get the simulation, we create a trail and an add node so we get the spline of our splash. With an extra node we create our pieces of plastic and we modify the shape with the curve view attribute we make when we resample the spline. And the last step was to play with some noise in order to have an interesting shape for our plastic pieces. We repeat this action with different parameters to add some variety. And now we're gonna talk about the HDA we create to transform our assets into polystyrene pieces. First, we import the low poly model we used for the animation. We block it at the first frame, while the animator made us a neutral pose at the center of the world. And we use this pose to make our transformation. We start with defining the top and bottom with the group by normal, and this gives us the sides. We add some noise to these sides to make like this object was break to become like this. On top and bottom, we use a texture with normal and displacement to make the flattened polystyrene bits. And to the sides, we copy sphere geometry to create the polystyrene bits. For this part, we use a point from volume to fill the object with points and we transfer an attribute, like color here, to keep only the point near the side of the geometry. Then we use a randomized attribute on the p-scale to give some diversity and we copy our sphere on the point. We separate our little balls in two categories. This on the center and this on the extremity. 
because we need the last one to make the contact between the flattened top and the side. We made a group with the points that are out of the top and bottom, and we use a ray node so these points are flattened to the top and bottom. We convert this point group into a primitive group, and we add them to the base geometry. Then we play with VDB and convert VDB to blend these parts into one geometry. To optimize this asset, we just keep our extremity sphere group as geometry. These on the center are converted into points, so we can instantiate the sphere at render time. And when we merge these three parts, we get our polystyrene piece. When the transformation is done, we use the point deform to get back the animation on the final asset. And this is how we made every polystyrene pieces in the film. And we arrive to our last point, our character FX tool. This was the last scene we created, so we update some functions. Thanks to our project file hierarchy, we build this interface where we can just give the second send shot and it automatically imports all the animated characters in the shot. Then we have three steps to do. Add a vellum simulation to make our stuffed beer softer. Add another vellum simulation to the patch of our beer to get a great fold. And add the fur on the characters. To show you these three parts, we'll take the example of our mother polar bear. First, we remesh the geometry to help the simulation and we have to select our pinned point that follow the animation without being simulated. Then, we add the vellum distance constraint and the tetrahedral volume constraint to improve the self-collision and add some bounciness to the body. We made a second vellum simulation to add some close fold to the geometry. We use the close constraint and we play with the parameters to get the result we want. We used a point deform to apply the modification to our based geometry. We add an option where we can paint on the model a mask where we want the modification to appear. The next step was to simulate the patchwork. It was always the same patchwork. So we just have to select the edge we want to be attached to the body and it will use this for every shot. Then we add a close constraint and that's all for the vellum simulation. For the fur, we made the grooming on Houdini. So we just have to use the guide deform to make the fur follow our model. And with the vellum step, we fix all the self collision. So we don't have any problem with the fur deformation. On this scene, we use the topnet contest. We add three different simulations per polar beer. So it will be a great waste of time if we had to do it manually. So we connect every file cache after each simulation into this topnet. The option wait for all allowed us to launch every simulation in the right order in just one click. We add the alambic export into this topnet, so at the end we just have to open the scene, choose the shot we want, indicate the frame range, and cook the output node of the topnet. It was a long process to make this scene, but at the end it was a great save of time. And this is how we handle the different part of our film with Houdini. I hope you find this interesting and thanks you a lot for watching. Bye!